morning and this morning I will show you some results about our project uh, Phoenix Shells which is a UFVEL based library for simulating thin structures and our group is composed by Jack Hale from University of Luxembourg, Stefan Bordas from University of Luxembourg and Corrado Maurini from uh, UPMC. This is a brief outline of the presentation. I start with our motivation and our objective, then I will talk uh, about uh, shell theories just to fix some notation. Then I will focus on MIT implement implementation in Phoenix, and then I will show a couple of results covering some models we implemented. So shell plate and in general thin structures are widely used in many fields of engineering um, because they are able to carry an high load with a minimum amount of mass. But despite this importance, um, to our knowledge a unified open source implementation of thin structural model is not yet available. And for example, we want to do some application, this is, this is a problem. For example, for this kind of application, uh, the first one is a multi-stable multi shell. A shell is multi-stable when uh, it has uh, more than one equilibrium configuration, stable equilibrium configuration, even in the absence of uh, applied load. And uh, another application, uh, we have some analytical scalings for the stress focus in, the, in the elastic sheets, like the piece of paper. And uh, for example, for the energy, the scaling energy with respect to the thickness of the sheet of paper of each fold. So uh, the UFL language provides the framework for writing this kind of uh, numerical models. And the Feng Shell will be a library consisting of uh, thin uh, structural models and uh, associated numerical techniques. And our aim is to have a solid um, open source pl platform of quality numerical method for thin structures and to link in a clear way the mathematical model from one end and the finite element solution from the other end. So, just a few remarks. Shell are two dimensional uh, elastic bodies uh, which oc occupy a thin uh, region around uh, a manifold embedded in the two dimensional space. And they can be uh, um, studied with reduced two dimensional problem. And this is uh, important uh, to run out of, be of interest because quantity of ingenuity relevance can be computed di directly in this way. And finally, um, non-trivial numerical problems arise also for flat shells, uh, namely pale plates and linear model. Uh, this is why in this talk I will focus on uh, linear plate models, and in particular on uh, rational mindlin plate model. So, sorry. So we have uh, two kinematic descriptors, uh, uh, scalar field providing the transverse displacement of the uh, point in the middle plane, and the uh, vector field providing the, the rotation of the normal, the fiber normal of, of the, uh, the middle plane. And suitable uh, strain measure are a uh, tensor field provided, providing the uh, curvature of the middle, uh, the middle surface after the deflection, which is the, the symmetric part of the gradient of the rotation, and the uh, shearing vector, a vector field provided the difference between the normal to the deflected surface and the rotation of the fiber normal to the middle plane. So in this kind of theory, the shearable theory is the flexor is the sum of two contributions. The one is the bending and the other one is the shearing, so the energy has one contribution, contribution arising from the bending and the other one arising, arising from the shearing. For thin structure, actually, the one can assume in principle that the um, rotation of the fiber normal to the plane uh, is actually, or the, the fiber normal to the plane actually orthogonal after the, the, the deflection uh, of the middle surface. So this is the, the Kirchhoff constraint, and in this case, the 
um, the flexor is composed by just one contribution, which is the bending one. And uh, we have the second gradient of the transverse displacement into the energy. And uh, I remarked that when t goes to zero, when t, the thickness of the plate goes to zero, so for thin plates, the rational mean model converges asymptotically to the Kirchhoff model with the Kirchhoff constraint. So this is the list of our model. We have both linear and nonlinear model. And uh, this disti distinction between shearable and bending theories is uh, of uh, mean mean for also for uh, the computational point of view, since we have implemented the bending models by employing the continuous discontinuous Galerkin formulation in order to avoid the H2 elements. And uh, we have implemented the shear shearable models uh, by employing uh, a M M MITC formulation in order to avoid the numerical locking. So just uh, a few remarks about numerical locking in team plates. We, have, uh, we can, can consider a sequence of problems in the thickness parameter T of the rational mean lean uh, model. So we have the bending contribution, the shearing contribution. I have the standard sp H1 spaces for both the rotation and the transverse displacement. When T goes to zero, this, we have this limit problem with the space is actually the space for, uh, of the function which, uh, for which the Kirchhoff con constraints hold. And uh, um, while we consider the limit problem of the discrete uh, rational mean model, we obtain that actually the space is key, key h, which is the intersection between this space of the function for which the Kirchhoff constraints holds and our discrete function space. As, and if k is not large enough, the basis function cannot properly re represent the Kirchhoff constraint. So this means that the shear term doesn't vanish and for very thin shell, this term blows up. And this means that the shear spurious term tend to lock the model. And this is why we obtain this kind of be unacceptable behavior. Uh, so for very, we have a non-uniform con convergence in the thickness parameter and for very thin shell, the, the element lock. So uh, regarding locking here, the first idea is to recognize that the uh, problem relies in the shear terms. And this is, uh, and for uh, this space, uh, for the rotation and transverse displacement, we recognize that the shear term should belong to H car. And uh, so one uh, first idea to cure locking is to use a mixed formulation with the penalty term. And this is the, one st the standard uh, mixed formulation. The main idea with the MITC formulation is to recognize that the discretization of the mixed formulation can be actually transformed into a displacement form in which we have the, um, the bending contribution, which is in unaffe affected by this uh, transformation, and the shearing tr con contribution in which appears a term which is a reduced rotation, and R is a reduction operator which link the H1 space to the space of the shearing strain and interpolates piecewise smooth, fu smooth function into the shear space. And the main advantages of this formulation is, are that uh, it leads to a system of equation with positive defined matrices and fewer unknowns and that uh, uh, this reduction operator can, uh, is local and the system matrix can be assembled at uh, the local level. So elements in this family are different uh, uh, only for the choice of the space for the rotation, for the transverse displacement and from the shear strain, and for the tying, which is expressed by this reduction operator. And uh, this tying is uh, between the interpolation of the shear uh, contribution in the shear space and the shear strain as computed with the standard displacement and rotation space. So for example, for uh, the one of the uh, lower the elements of this family, the Duran Lieberman one, we have that the rotation is in CG2, the displacement in CG1, and the shear is Nedelec one. 
And what we uh, want is uh, um, we have the shear contribution to the elastic energy which is expressed in this space. I want to link the degree of freedom of this space with the degree of freedom of this other space in order to have finally a, a, a problem which appears just these two spaces. And this is what this operator done, does. So uh, regarding Phoenix implementation, we have uh, first defined the full mixed space with the, tree, this, with the space for the rotation, for the displacement and for the shear. So we have V3 for the displacement, R for the rotation, and RR for the reduced rotation. And then we have the full mixed function space. Then we have the redu reduction tying operator, which is this one. And we have uh, the shear strain, the reduction rotation, and the space, the, the full space. And this is the, the fixed implementation of the reduction operator. Then we define the projection form A10, which is the, um, this is the shear strain, and this is the operator previously defined, which acts on the trial and test, fun uh, test uh, shear, shear strain. Then we define the shear form A01. We have the shear energy, which is defined with the on the full space, so we have the re re reduced rotation. And we have, we have the uh, shear form at A01 in, in this way. Then the primal mixed space, we define a primal mixed space with just the space of the rotation uh, and the, the mixed function space of the rotation and of the displacement. And we define the unprojected bending form A00. We have the bending energy and so we obtain the A00 which is defined on the unprojected space, on the primal space. Finally, we use a custom assembler in order to perform the projection at the local linear algebra level. So we call this MITC assembler and the argument are A00, which is the bending contribution on the primal space. We call A A01 the projection. The A01 is the shear term on the, uh, on the full mi mixed space. So this is the shear terms uh, with the reduced rotation and A10, A which is the term which provides the mm, projection. And we have a C++ code in order to assemble the stiffness matrix. So we have the assemble of the A001 term, then project one, and the assemble of A01 term, which is the shear, where they use the shear terms. And A10 and A10 are the projection matrix. And then we, uh, we have the just-in-time completion with distance of the C++, the C++ code. Then I, will, I would like to show you some results. First, a uh, comparison with the analytical solution provided by Loadina. This is a square, a square clamped uh, plate. And we have for the H1 norm of the rotation and the rel relative error for the displacement semi-norm uniform convergence in the thickness parameter, as expected. And we turn now on nonlinear model. So this is our locking cure, and this is uh, our um, first uh, nonlinear non model in our project. This is the von Karman plate model, um, which is widely used in many applications. And uh, we start with the scalings for epsilon being some norm of the curvature. We have that in plane displacement is an order of magnitude uh, smaller than the transverse displacement. Starting with the scalings, the von Karman plate retains uh, is widely used because it's the simple model that retains the minimal geometrical nonlinearity is able to catch the coupling between the membrane strains E and the bending strains K. And in K we have the same of the Kirchhoff bending model, while in this uh, membrane strain we have the symmetric part of the gradient of the in-plane displacement and this nonlinear term which is the coupling between the transverse displacement and the membrane strains. 
and the integrability condition of these two uh, strain measures are actually the, uh, correspond to a linearization of the Gauss theorem, theorem aggregium. This mean, and this link, the Gaussian curvature of the surface uh, in this linearized version is determinant of this uh, curvature tensor and the uh, double car of the mem tens mm, strain membrane tensor E. And this is so important because uh, the elastic energy for this model uh, in general for the model, for the linear model of shell mm, is split in two contributions. The one is the same in this case of the Kirchhoff law bending uh, energy. So we have a, a quadratic functional in the second gradient of the transverse displacement. And we have the membrane energy, which is a, functional, a quadratic functional in, the, in, the, in this, tensor, in this uh, strain tensor. And we have that there are, they are, there are this scaling, so we have uh, the thickness minus 2. And this means that whenever possible, the plate tends to bend in a developable surface so as that uh, the uh, Gaussian curv curvature doesn't change. So uh, developer surface, this means that for, for that k equals to zero, we have that uh, we have no membrane strain and no membrane energy. So as an example, we have uh, a circular plate free at the boundary and with, and with uh, no uniform thickness, uh, which has a lenticular cross section like this. And as a load, we have an, uh, indeed an elastic curvature, which can be for example, a temperature gradient through the thickness. And for this kind of problem, uh, we have an, an analytical results, and you observe that uh, at, uh, for, lower, for low value of the inelastic curvature, the plate tends to bend in a way that uh, all the, in all the, dire the direction, the curvature is the same. So it tends to bend in a sphere like this. But after a certain threshold, which can be computed analytically, these uh, the analytical values, the plate tends to bend in a developable surface. So one of the principal curvature tends to flat. And this is what happens in, in this case. So the line is for the analytical solution, and the points are for the Phoenix uh, computed solution. And uh, this is an example of uh, multi-stable shell. Indeed, the configuration of, with the, of this rotation about 19 degrees, so with the flat curvature here and the curvature here, is also a stable configuration. So <coughs> after, after this threshold, we have two stable configurations. Our future perspective are for at the moment to implement uh, the same procedure with the MITC for membrane locking free element for the nonlinear coiter shell model, which is a bending model, and to implement membrane and shear locking free element for the nonlinear Nagli shell model in order to have a uh, true fully nonlinear uh, shell model in our library. These are the main reference and uh, Thanks for listening. Are there any questions? So, with the future work, what formulation? For the coil shell, I, I think uh, this continues hierarchy because the coil shell uh, is a bending formulation. So, so, we have the second gradient of the transverse displacement uh, in the the energy, so I think we can start um, by trying to implement with this continuous hierarchy formulation the coitation model and uh, then uh, try to implement the MITC formulation for the NAGDI model, which we have the shear, uh, the shear contribution and uh, we have that uh, uh, this kind of formulation can apply in a straightforward.
soon after we play the traffic, we'll have lunch until uh, uh, 1.45. Thank you.